What do you do, dear friends, when you've got visitors from out of town or from outside of our nation? Welcome, dear friends, to the Gawker Reality Check. Last weekend, I had some buddies from the UK, not a nation as free as ours, visiting me here in the United States. So I thought, let's show these guys some liberty, more freedom than they could ever imagine. So I took them to the nation's biggest gun show. Thank you, Annette, for being such an amazing hostess. And then after I showed them the Second Amendment in practice, I said, well, let's go and shoot some guns. So under the guidance of a master chief, a former SEAL who ran the BUDS course, thank you, Steve, we took our friends to the range. They are the hosts of an amazing British podcast called Trigonometry. Let's play uh, a little video. Get this done just a little bit. Okay, fingers on the trigger. Lean into it a little bit so you control, your body helps control that muscle flip. Press, 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 press. Good job. That is Francis Foster and Constantin Kissins, the host of the Trigonometry podcast. Please follow those guys. They acquitted themselves very well. There's individuals who hadn't shot before. Here's a photograph with me and the lads, although their producer, who's hiding uh, out of camera shot, Anton, you were the dead eye. You were the sharpest shooter of them all. Now, the fun we had was fabulous, totally American. They were delighted, and for me, it was also a clarifying moment. It helped to help me understand yet again what's so special about our constitutional order and why guns and liberty are inexorably connected. Now, I could talk about my family background. I could talk about the 1956 revolution. Here's that iconic cover from Time magazine showing that young revolutionary fighting against the Soviet hordes. And who was it that fought for liberty during those 10 days of freedom? It was every part of Hungarian society. Young men, boys, girls, women, mothers, members of the factory working class, students from college that pushed back. And if you have a survey of not just one little country in Central Europe, but the last hundred years, what do you see from Lenin and Stalin in the Russian Revolution of 1917, all the way through Hitler and the Third Reich? And it's not just Europe. We can go to Asia. We can talk about Mao. We see what? A population disarmed by a dictatorial regime because they can't do what they want to do unless you are disarmed. Is that just ancient history? Is that something that has nothing to do with our part of the world, our hemisphere? Of course not. Look at Venezuela. Look at what happened under Maduro. Look at what happened in 2012. Here are the headlines. The Venezuelan people disarmed by their regime. Why? Because that's the only way they can take over. And you think it doesn't apply to an advanced nation like ours? How about Australia, the land of crocodile Dundee and manly men? Well, here's the footage of 600,000 weapons that belonged to private citizens being destroyed by the Australian government that doesn't want its citizens to be free. So the danger is real across our civilization, and it's happening here. Don't forget what Robert O'Rourke, Beto as he likes to style himself as, he said the quiet part out loud. He said, yes, we're coming after your AR-15s. But then somebody decided to stand up to him. Let's play cut. Well, I am here to say hell no, you're not. Um, so with that, um, I would like to know how you intend to legislate evil, because it is not the gun, it is the heart of the man that does that. We all have stories, excuse me. Let's, let's, let's allow her to finish, please, please, please. We please. can all have these stories, we all have the experiences. I was living in Aurora, during Columbine, I had just recently moved um, when the Aurora shootings happened, yet I have very close ties here. Yet all of those people were there defenseless. They had no way 
to defend themselves against a crazed shooter. So I want to know how you intend to legislate the hearts of men and leave American citizens like, my felt, my, like myself, American mothers, I have four children, I'm five foot zero, 100 pounds, cannot really defend myself with a fist. That 100 pound woman was propelled by that video to national fame and is now a congresswoman. And here we have an ad, let's just play it if we have the B-roll, of her standing up for the Second Amendment, walking around this hellhole that is Washington, D.C. And we are delighted to have her on the show today. From Colorado, it's Lauren Bobert. Congresswoman Bobert, welcome to the Gorka Reality Check. Dr. Gorka, it is great to be on with you today. And man, looking back at that clip that happened uh, just the three years ago with Robert Francis O'Rourke, um, I would say uh, my words were pretty disarming to him. Uh, they were very disarming. I think his political future is shot, if you'll allow me to say, after you challenged him on the Second Amendment. You have a brand new book. It's My American Life, just released. Guys, if you haven't read it, you need to order it right now, My American Life. But first, I have to ask you, what made you a successful businesswoman who is living her life, providing a crust for your employees, providing for your family? Why did you do what you did in a public forum in front of that politician? Why did you feel the need to stand up? Yes, so Dr. Gorka, uh, my upbringing, I, I lived under failed policies. I, I lived in a Democrat household and I saw firsthand, I experienced firsthand how restrictive their policies are. There's not a lot of liberty uh, under Democrat rule. In fact, it left us in uh, bread lines waiting for government cheese. And I knew that that was not America's best at 11 years old. So I started working as a young teenager at a McDonald's and learned that I could do a better job taking care of myself than government did. Now, fast forward, my, I have have a husband, four wonderful boys, and a restaurant, and a lot of employees, vendors, patrons that I needed to take care of. And I saw the Second Amendment um, to be the best uh, line of defense to make sure everyone was kept sa safe in my establishment. Uh, now, I am a, a petite woman, and I need an equalizer. I need um, a, a, an equalizer to protect me against a larger potential aggressor. And when Beto O'Rourke told the world the Democrat playbook, hell yes, we intend to take your AR-15s and your AK-47s, I was compelled to go to him because I saw that a disarmed populace, if the citizenry in America is disarmed, then we are no longer citizens. We are subjects. You know, here in America, we have gourmet treats for puppies. We have uh, these amazing groomers for dogs. Well, in Venezuela, they eat the dogs. And it started because yeah. they don't have firearms. They do not have a way to protect themselves, to defend themselves against a tyrannical government. Uh, so I, I wanted to go down and confront him and, and tell him exactly what the Second Amendment is intended to do. And I have been um, defending that and many other rights uh, since that day. Now, as a United States Congresswoman, isn't that something? Only in America you could go from government cheese to United States Congresswoman. I love it. No government cheese for this lady. Let's show the cover of the brand new book again, uh, My American Life. Uh, you are carrying, it looks like a Glock to me on your hip right there. Yes. And uh, what is your restaurant in Rifle, Coral, Colorado? What is it famous for? Uh, describe uh, how your staff go to work. Yes, yeah, so for nine years, we had a restaurant, Shooter's Grill in Rifle, Colorado, where all of the waitresses open carried. Uh, so many people from all over America would stop in and see the girls with the guns, uh, but they would always come back for uh, another bite to eat. Uh, it was a wonderful establishment. And, uh, you know, thank you so much for, for mentioning the book. Um, I, I believe that this is a story that millions of Americans need to hear. The fake news loves to try to tell the, my story for me. So I decided to write it myself, and I hope that my my story, my life experiences encourage and inspire other people to step up and do something to serve their country because it, really we live in a country where our options are limitless and you can achieve the American dream, but it's something that we have to fight for. 
Well, you are the exemplar of what I see as the citizen politician, an individual who is a citizen first and only accidentally a politician. And that is MAGA, right. that is America first. That's what we need more of. Last question to you. What we are seeing right now, whether it's Beto, whether it's the new bill, the senile old man in the White House signed, is this just the regular Democrat kind of anti-gun thing? Or is this qualitatively worse than we've seen before under Clinton and others? I, I think that this is absolutely worse. Uh, they know that their time is short, so they are getting as aggressive as po possible with their progressive policy. Um, they are trying every tactic they can to push forward with their agenda because they know that Republicans will take back the House, and next year we will be able to fire Nancy Pelosi. And Republicans need to be sure that we don't start governing like Democrats because that's the only way we lose the midterms. Uh, but I believe that the Democrat Party has uh, gone so far to the left it's going to take years, maybe decades, for them to recover and even uh, attempt to come back to the center. They want to have complete control, and they want the American people to be stuck in a cycle of dependency under their leadership. Democrats believe yeah. that yeah, she government is good. The government is God, and uh, they don't believe that God is the one who gave us our rights. Uh, so it, it's it's really easy for them to want all of that power. Yeah, that's what they want. You've lived the American dream and you're fighting for it every single day. God bless you. The book is My American Life. We need many more like her out there. Follow this lady on social media, Colorado's very own Lauren Bobert.